So I have some gas in a sealed container and I'm slowly heating that gas up. As expected, the gas particles are going to go faster and faster and that actually means that their kinetic energy, the energy of their motion, is increasing more and more. Some of the particles are slow still, some are very fast, but most are in the middle there. I'm now going to cool down the gas and as I cool it down, as expected, they're going to go slower and slower. And I'm going to leave behind three lines. The IB would expect you to draw these three lines. Notice that the area under those three lines is the same. And the reason the area is the same under those three lines is because the number of gas particles is unchanged. Okay, so you'd be expected to reproduce this Boltzmann distribution diagram and, oh, I'll just get comfy, and uh, maybe just annotate a diagram they provide. So this is going to be the cooler temperature of the gas. I'm just going to make up a temperature, let's say 100 Kelvin. Uh, this would be the warmer one, let's say 200 Kelvin. And finally, let's say that's 300 Kelvin. These are just arbitrary numbers. Again, I've got the areas the same uh, because the area represents a number of particles that are in the gas and that hasn't changed. What else could we ask you to do? Well, if you forgot these labels, you're going to lose a point, so make sure you've got that. If it doesn't hit at zero, zero, you're going to lose a point. And over here, if, if your line doesn't asymptote, if it looks like it's going to touch that line or go under it, that's another point off. Geez, you've already lost three points. And the fourth point, if, you, if it starts to go up or tick up at the end, that's just terrible too. So let's annotate it. Let's say that the activation energy is going to be uh, 250, whatever the units are, doesn't matter. And so that's the EA, the activation energy. Then we'd ask you to uh, identify or shade in different parts. This tiny area here are the reactants that have energy equal to or greater than activation energy. And then the IB might say, are they going to react? Who knows? I don't know. Reactants have to collide with the correct geometry and have energy equal to or greater than activation energy. So I only know about the energy. Then we might ask you about this larger area here. So this area corresponds to the 300 Kelvin line, the hotter line, and it shows the reactants that have energy equal to or greater than the activation energy. Now notice that's a much bigger area. So that's one of the reasons why reactions are faster when you heat them. As you heat them, more of the reactants have energy greater than activation energy. So they're more likely to react. They don't definitely react, but they're just more likely to react. The other reason, of course, is that when you heat up a reaction, there's more frequent collisions. But that's, uh, that's by the by. Just taking a small sidebar, just recalling the energy diagram, like this, it goes up, it looks a bit like the Boltzmann distribution, but it isn't. Let's try and do it without, lovely. And that's reactants, that's products, and then we've got progress of reaction, but the IB might allow you to, to use the word time, not progress of time, progress of reaction. And then you've got energy over here. Hmm. So just to recap, the activation energy was the height of the first hump, and we decided that was going to be 250. Lovely. Now the IB also likes you to annotate these diagrams with a, with a catalyst. So a catalyst lowers the activation energy. So I'm going to draw, again, I'm just going to pick a number here. So let's say that the with a catalyst, the activation energy now is going to be, I don't know, let's say 150. Alrighty. Going back to this diagram, the Boltzmann distribution, let me draw in a line for the catalyst at 150. Nice. Annotate it, EA catalyst. Oh, okay, so let's look at the cold situation, the 100K. So originally, only these reactants had energy greater than activation energy. But when you add a catalyst, all of these ones now have enough energy to react. Of course, again, at 100 Kelvin. Compare that to, let's say, these here. So this is a much bigger area, and it carries on, it carries on, it carries on. 
And so that area represents at 300 Kelvin, one point, the reactants that have energy equal to or greater than activation energy, two points, uh, if you've added a catalyst. That tends to be the third point. And notice that's the biggest area we've looked at so far. So a catalyst and high temperature is going to give you the most, uh, the most reactants uh, that could react, energetically anyway. If the IB ever hired me, the IB just ignores me. What do you care? Uh, I would ask this question here. I would ask, what does this represent? Have a little think. And I think the answer is that these are the extra reactants that have enough energy, energy greater than equals activation energy. Uh, when you add a catalyst, a noisy street, eh? At 200 Kelvin. So I think that's where the points are. Okay. And we're done. Well, for now, stay tuned for a bit of Boltzmann history. On a side note, uh, Ludwig Boltzmann uh, had bipolar disorder. So he had bouts of hyper and hypo. He was very, very kind of energized and then he was very, very depressed. Uh, his personality swung between those two extremes. Uh, now, in modern day, there's medication for it, but he actually uh, he ended up killing himself over it just before everyone agreed that his work was uh, universal and fantastic in physics. In fact, it can be argued that the only law in physics that we know will never change is the second law of thermodynamics, which Ludwig Boltzmann had a big part in, uh, in creating. What a pity, eh?